Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. One of the ways to establish occlusion on a removable partial denture is to use a functionally generated path. This negates the use of a semi-adjustable or fully adjustable articulator. The functionally generated path uh, has an adva another advantage in taking the dynamic movements from the patient and utilizing them in the fabrication of the occlusion. The, uh, as opposed to using the static positional records that would be used to set a semi-adjustable articulator. One, uh, one prerequisite is that the patient's occlusion be fully adjusted and properly adjusted beforehand because in any symptoms of uh, temporomandibular joint pathology or dysfunction have to be uh, removed because the patient is going to give us the occlusion that she presently has, the guidances that she presently uh, has in her mouth. The first thing we would like to do would be to take the partial denture framework with a record base fabricated from the uh, altered master cast and try it in the patient's mouth and be sure that this framework with the base does not impede the, inclusion, the occlusion in any way. I'm going to close that together. That's it. Just tap. Okay, open. Feel it just, I'm not quite seated. Tap together. Okay, now just move from side to side. Does that interfere any place? No? Yeah. Straight forward, bite together, and move straight forward. That's right. Just move around all different possible excursion. Just rub your teeth. And that doesn't interfere in any way. No the patient is able to make all the excursions without feeling the removable partial denture in position. This uh, is necessary because if there is a high spot, it would be reflected in the functionally generated path. And we don't want this to occur. Uh, another thing we should absolutely be sure of and not take the patient's word for is to check to see, bite down, with shim stock if the, if the partial is interfering. Open, bite on your back teeth, that's right. And we see that our anterior contacts, which we have previously uh, noted that she, has in, that she has without the partial, bite down, she still has with the partial denture in position. Okay, now the partial denture has now been adjusted so it's out of occlusion and it's not interfering with any excursions that the patient uh, is going to make. Now we're going to take the partial denture from the patient and the first thing we're going to do is to add is to add an acrylic base or platform for our, uh, for, our, for our functionally generated path record. And we're going to add the acrylic and then take it to the patient in the softened state and have the patient close into it. The acrylic that we're going to use for this proce procedure is called uh, TMJ acrylic. Now, other acrylics will work. Uh, such as a forma tray, tray material, or perm acrylic, uh, some of the other types of acrylics will work. But the TMJ acrylic has the advantage of having a lot of filler material in it, a diatomaceous earth, and it becomes a very dead acrylic without rebound. In other words, if the patient closes into it, uh, the acrylic will stay without, without rebounding. So we're going to mix some of this acrylic. We're merely going to add the liquid as with other polymerizing, auto polymerizing acrylics and 
mix it together, and it'll take just a few minutes probably to reach its working consistency. The acrylic is now reaching its working consistency, and I have my hands Vaseline, and hopefully the material will not stick to the to my fingers. And we're just going to make a little uh, roll out of the doughy acrylic. Sometimes advantageous to wet the base just slightly with the monomer so that it ensures adhesion. And the object of this is to put an occlusal table on that is of adequate width so that the entire opposing tooth will be recorded. I'm trying to establish an occlusal plane slightly higher than the patient's uh, mandibular occlusal plane so that when she bites into it she will register the indentations into this surface. Try to make it wide enough so that it, the entire opposing surface is uh, recorded. Okay, we're going to take it then to the patient's mouth and we're going to ask the patient to place that, place that in your mouth. First. Yeah. And for better visibility. And we'll seat the appliance. Started correctly. Hmm. There, have to find the correct path of insertion. Make sure the cheek is out of the way. Okay, and we'll have the patient then close into the centric occlusion position. The acrylic will take some time to set up, and it is exothermic, so we're going to. Uh, we're going to allow some of the polymerization to take place and then we'll remove it from the mouth and let it cool. The acrylic has now polymerized and we have the indentations of the opposing dentition in the centric occlusion position. Now this acrylic is merely to form a table for a wax which is going to record the dynamic movements of the patient. So we're going to level the table and take the indentations off and thin it buckle lingually so that it is wide enough to uh, have the opposing tooth, an indentation of the opposing tooth, but will not interfere with the tongue or any of the uh, soft tissue of the patient's mouth, the cheek, etc. We're going to mark then the supporting cusp areas with this pencil. These are the lingual of the maxillary teeth. This bicuspid area does have a double, double cuspid ponic. It's a bridge opposing. And I mark those in the pencil so that when it is, when it is uh, relieved or when we take it to the arbor band or fast cut acrylic burr for the relief, we'll know the approximate level we're at. That that would be probably the most uh, inferior position of the opposing indentations. Now I have an acrylic table already cut and relieved and you notice that it is flat so that the wax can be added to the occlusal surface and none of the indentations or, or, or the acrylic that, w that, was, that were present when she just closed into the centric occlusion will interfere or do any of the guiding 
of the mandibular movements. We want the patient's teeth to be guided by her musculature, unimpeded by any of the appliance that we're placing in the patient's mouth. And we see that we have some remnants of these little eccentric dots that we uh, had placed previously. Now we have to take this back to the patient's mouth to check and see that, double check, that it does not interfere with the patient's occlusion in any way. I'll close. And if we look closely at that, you tilt your head down just a little bit, that's right. We can see that the buccal cusps are free. There are no contacts on the, uh, in the opposing arches onto the, on the acrylic. Maybe light contacts in the lingual area, which you can relieve. It isn't necessary that those contacts even, be, uh, even hold shim stock. They should, they should be even free. All right, now close down. We double check to make sure that that does not interfere at all with, uh, that it doesn't interfere and we can use the shim stock as a check. It should be holding shim stock just as it did previously with the appliance out of the mouth or with the appliance in the mouth. Now move uh, from side to side and straight forward. Does that interfere at all? Can you feel it any place? Okay. I'm going to open just a, open just a little bit, and I'll check the centric relation position. Just, let, just relax. Does that interfere at all any place? Mm -hmm. Okay. And centric relation does not interfere. Protrusive and lateral excursions do not interfere. We are set to add the wax, the recording wax, to the occlusal surface. Okay, you can remove this now. And I'll remove the appliance from the patient's mouth and we'll then add the recording wax. Now the wax that we use is a soft wax, but if it is chilled with ice water or with cold water, is rather firm. This is called Bosworth Synthetic Tacky Wax and it is made purposely for functionally generated path procedures. Now we'll add in small increments this wax to this occlusal surface. That will allow us to, when we are finished, to have the wax softened probably all the way through. The wax addition has been completed and again we have added it to the occlusal table that has been created uh, in the acrylic and we've added it the thickness of about two millimeters or so. This t depends totally on uh, the height of the impression that is going to result is totally dependent upon the incisal guidance or the guidance of the occlusion, the remaining occlusion of the patient. If she has a steep cuspid rise, for example, it wouldn't show much lateral drag at all in the finished product. And if it is a very flat occlusion, it will be almost totally flat. We're going to take this softened wax and place it in the patient's mouth And the first position that we're going to record, open. Now, we want to take, we want to look at that posterior area. Let me hold this back here. And I'm going to register the centric relation. Tilt your head down just a little bit. The centric relation position first. The, the initial, the centric relation, centric occlusion position. Okay, now just, I'm going to close you up into the wax. Okay, now squeeze. And tilt your head down just a little bit. That's right. And the teeth have recorded now that area of centric between centric relation and centric occlusion. Just open, 
and close a couple of times. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now we're going to, before we go any further with any excursions, we're going to examine, we're going to examine the indentations that she's made. Now what we are looking for is to see that the entire surface of each opposing tooth is in the wax. And we have a little border around each one of these opposing, the indentations of these opposing teeth. Now this is the centric relation, centric occlusion recording for the patient. When gold occlusals are to be used on the removable appliance, to aid the waxing, an anatomic model should probably be mounted uh, in be previous to making the template. And it's a good idea that at this time, after recording just the centric relation, centric occlusion position, we could place on the master model the master model can be placed any place within this Hanau articulator. It needn't have uh, face bow registrations or anything uh, such as that. Just in the center of the uh, articulator is fine. We can then take a, an opposing model, a model of uh, cast of the opposing dentition, and place it into that centric relation, centric occlusion recording, place the remaining dentition in the centric occlusion position. The, this anatomic model can then be mounted in the articulator on one ring and later we'll mount the template uh, that will be created after we go on and, and create our uh, dynamic registrations in the lateral and infraborder positions, but we will it is easier to wax initially against this anatomic model and then later against, clear it against the template. Now our job is to record the eccentric positions, border, both border positions, lateral and protrusive, and then in, infraborder uh, positions. So we're going to place it back in the mouth Okay, just close down into that. Very good. I'm going to have you open. Now let's, let's this in position. Okay, now, that's right, if you could hold that. Very good. Hold it up and out. Very good. Now bite down. Now move your jaw toward me. That's good. Now this would bite down and move your jaw toward me again. That would be recording the balancing position. Okay, now bite down and move your jaw away from me. That's it. Just let your teeth glide over each other. That's it. Very good. Bite down again in the center. And slide your jaw straight forward. We're registering the protrusive excursion. Okay, now just slide, just hold bite together and just slide all around any place you want to go. Now, we're recording, and you could pretend you're chewing also, all the infraborder or intraborder uh, positions of the mandible. In some functionally generated procedures, a more durable wax such as Pex Purple is used at this procedure, and the patient is allowed to wear the appliance home and to, uh, except for eating and drinking uh, fluids and foods, they are allowed to sleep with the appliance in position with the PEX purple wax, which is harder wax, and would not become a dislodge. Uh, it, it is also a, an acceptable procedure. Although the PEX purple wax is much harder and you have to be ensured that uh, 
the hardness of the wax has not done any of the guiding for the patient. The patient has to be having that has to have the guidance come from their own dentition. This is the beauty of using the soft wax uh, in, uh, in place of the hard wax. The soft wax is used more for chair side functionally generated path procedures. Okay, when you are ensured that the patient has made all of these uh, movements and possibly even having the patient clenched, clenched together and if, you, if they are bruxers or if they have signs of bruxing, uh, if you, particularly if you let the patient go out into the waiting room or read or do something uh, such as that, maybe a half an hour or so before you take the, pa the appliance away from the patient, you may capture a few more of these intra-border movements. We're going to, you can take this out. We're going to just examine this now. and see if there is anything different than what the patient originally gave us in the centric relation, centric occlusion. And we do see some guidances coming out this direction for the working, this would be the working uh, path of the maxillary uh, cusp. And you see she spread the wax around away from that initial indentation that she has made. Now, as I said before, this patient has somewhat of a steep tooth guidance, and so the wax isn't going to be pushed quite as, uh, or leveled out laterally quite as much as if she had a flat incisal guidance, or less of an incisal or tooth guidance. The other thing I want to mention about the functionally generated record is that it gives you balanced occlusion. And if you do not use it correctly, uh, we know that balanced occlusion is not what we want for the removable partial denture. So in making the template and setting the teeth, uh, this will have to be compensated for, and we will take out or uh, not put in any balancing contacts in the finished occlusion. But if you were just to use this and to pour a positive of this negative that she has given us, you would have a perfectly balanced occlusion. But this is a functionally generated path uh, from the patient and all the dynamic movements uh, incorporated with mandibular movements are incorporated into this product. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.